So when the first companions of St. Ignatius um, came to Rome, they had some tasks that they were given to do, and then they returned to Rome. And they returned to Rome with a tremendous enthusiasm. And in that enthusiasm, they went to different churches and they began to preach um, to the people, even though it was um, past Lent. Um, there was the common you know, Lenten mission, I think, at that time. But they began to preach after um, Lent and draw people um, to the Lord as best they could. But one of the things that they discovered is that there was an Augustinian friar who was in his preaching, it's very popular, um, was leading people astray in certain things that um, demanded, you know, um, kind of uh, an, uh, an orthodoxy. And so um, they approached him and spoke to him, but he didn't want to um, change what he was doing. And so they began to, you know, correct what he was saying in their own preaching. He had a certain popular following. And so um, he began to, or his, his followers began to spread the rumor that the um, Inigistas, as they called them, for Inigo, Ignatius, um, had, were fleeing from um, other parts of the Christian world because they had been condemned by the Inquisition. And so Ignatius was faced with this very serious um, problem. And then other irregularities began to be um, the objects of an accusation against the Jesuits. And so one of the, um, one of the cardinals who had most um, supported them um, actually put in a little bit of a spy um, in the place where they were living. And so this was a worker in the, uh, this vineyard that was where they were living. And, um, and he was put to spend a week observing how they were living and whether or not there was any truth to the rumors that were being passed around about an immoral lifestyle. And after a week, um, he was brought you know, to give his report and he said, they are living like saints. Um, he described, um, and that's how we know in some ways um, how they were living, described how they slept um, in, um, in these blankets or carpets that weren't very good at all, how they um, you know, prayed and dedicated themselves to prayer. Their conversation was very holy and their apostolic zeal was very powerful. And what is interesting for me in all of this is that their lifestyle matched what it was that they had accepted when they first did the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, that God would be, as best they could, everything to them. And they would organize their life and dedicate their lives to the following of God. And anything that was strain, you know, was extraneous to that, what was extra, they would keep pretty far away. So their lifestyle was immensely simple and their, um, their goal was to be as apostolically available as they possibly could. And in this, this wisdom of Ignatius that they drew from the spiritual exercises can be so helpful for ourselves as we ask ourselves in the lives that we are living, are we living up to the vocation that we are supposed to live? As I live here, do I live as simply perhaps as I should? Um, other people, as they live their lives, do they live as dedicated to their family and do what they can to, to bless their families and help their families to grow closer to the Lord? Or is our conversation, conversation that is dignified, un, of, uh, and, dignified and worthy of the, of the gospel? How is it that we live that our whole lives can be models in it as best we can of what it is to live convinced of the love of God and wanting to share that with others. And that's the wisdom of St. Ignatius for today.